Leah Hill here at Harvest with Ranch and welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be showing you how to cook one of our amazing grass finish roast. So you can do this recipe with any roast that you do purchase on the store. So this is, I'm using a rump roast just because I had, I always pull out a few extra out of the freezer, out of inventory for me because it is one of my favorite roasts. So I'm going to be using my Instapot pressure cooker. Um, any pressure cooker, they're kind of all the same. Um, so I'm going to be using this, but you can also use a traditional slow cooker or do it on the stove top. So at the end of the video, I'll go through really quick kind of the different steps once we get to that part. But for every single way you're going to cook this, this is the most important step. You're going to add your three fourths cup olive oil into the bottom of your pan. Okay. You are going to already have your meat defrosted. And what we're going to be doing is what I call browning. You don't want to burn your meat, but you want to brown it. This sears the tendons and the meat and it releases those juices within the cut. And it just gives your gravy the most amazing layer of flavor. It almost, it's not smoky flavor, but it's kind of the closest thing I can attribute that, that flavor to. So if you remember grandma's pot roast or you went to Cracker Barrel as a kid or something like that and they just, it was just, oh, so good. That's their secret. That's what they do. They do a browning process with the roast. So I'm gonna start at the bottom for three minutes, flip it three minutes. I usually turn it up on its front and its back. That way I get this nice sear profile for the browning process. So I already have my Instapot on saute sear uh, setting. So I know each one, the buttons and everything is different, but basically all I'm doing is slightly warming up the olive oil. I can feel the heat in the pot itself. I'm going to directly place the kind of meat in here. But before I do that, I am actually going to take just a smidge of the seasoning. I only do a little bit of salt. I do not put my main seasonings on this cut yet because they can burn and you don't want to put burnt herbs into your food. And there you go. So I'm going to salt the other side. And I'm going to pull this out in just a second and I'm going to show you what one size side brown actually looks like. I'll be right back. All right guys, so this is uh, four minutes browned on one side. I will say be very careful when you take this out with the oil popping, not to burn yourself. So I have my handy dandy little forks and then my uh, tongs over there. So this is browned, not burnt, but browned. So this is getting a lot of that good meaty juiciness into the olive oil. And it's bringing out the amazing flavors within the tendons of the meat. So let me get this back in. So I am putting it on the other side right now. And I forgot to mention, make sure you put your oil, the saute mode on here on low and not high or you'll have grease popping everywhere. All right, I'm gonna get this thing browned uh, four minutes, four minutes, and I'm gonna turn on the fattest side, um, which would be like the bottom if you were to set the piece of meat down and it could stand up by itself. Those are, that's the other side I do. So I brown three sides of it at four minutes a piece. I know it's 12 minutes total, but you're gonna enjoy the flavor and spend that little extra time doing it. If you're on the stove top, you were doing the same exact thing. If you were doing it in a traditional slow cooker, you can do it on the stove top and then translate it over into your slow cooker since they do take a little bit of time to warm up. But if you already have it pre-warmed, you can do this step, the browning step, in a traditional slow cooker as well. All right, guys. So I did the top, the bottom for a minute. So right now I'm doing that uh, fatter layer where it can stand up on its own um, the bottom piece right now. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and take my two cups of white onions. Um, so this is just one large onion cut up and go ahead and add it into the olive oil next to the meat. We're going to go ahead and get these onions browned. So you don't want to add these too early. That's why I always do it um, on the last four minutes of the process because these things will burn super quick and then <laughs> you'll have to basically start back over and you're gonna have to throw out your, uh, at this point it's a brown roux, 
type of an oil. So that's what gives it that amazing flavor. All right, so that's going. I'm going to go ahead and finish with my salt. So total for the entire recipe, I use a tablespoon. So this is a tablespoon of black pepper. I use the multicolor variety. I use one tablespoon of garlic. And this is, normally I use um, half a teaspoon of smoked paprika, but I'm out, so I use just the little bit I had left. So this is actually the Paleo powder. It's the blue label. Um, it's the unsalted, so that's why I actually had to add salt, but it's really good. All I'm doing right here is just mixing in that paprika a little bit, and I'm just gonna dump this in. I am going to go in and stir the onions and all the seasoning in that wonderful browned olive oil. And then this has two and a half minutes left of browning on the butt, the bottom of the cut. And we'll be adding in our beef bone broth in just a second. Okay guys, I actually let my onions saute for an additional three minutes just so they got that beautiful caramelized flavor. Um, so I put a picture right here so you see what it looks like. Cool. And it's also a shot of it sitting on the bottom butt portion of the row. So it makes a little bit more sense what it looks like in the pot. So what I'm going to do from here, so we have our roast. It's browned on three sides. We have all of our seasonings and our olive oil and our onions in here. So I leave the tallow on our bone broth. So I am actually just breaking that up so I can get everything out of the jar a little faster and more efficiently. All right, so it's two jars of our grass finished bone broth. Beef, obviously. So I'm gonna let the jars warm up just a little bit so I can get that last bit of towel out of there. That's the, the collagen and the good stuff, the nutrients from the bones. So all that's in there, so I don't wanna waste any of it. So I'm just gonna let that get up to room temperature for a minute. And I'm just gonna stir this all together. I'm actually gonna put my roast back flat since I had it on the butt of the piece. Oh, it looks great. So I am going to go ahead and add, this is uh, four cups of carrots sliced. Now you don't want to slice them too thin, okay? Because what's going to happen in your slow cooker, on the stove top, or in an Instapot, if you make them too thin, they'll mush into nothing. Although it does make the gravy taste awesome and the carrots will thicken it a little bit just from the natural sugars um, in the carrot. Yeah, I like to have a little bit of texture to my food and it also, uh, you know, keeps a little bit more of the nutrients intact because it's a bigger piece. So let's get these in. Very gently, don't splash yourself in your face. All right, there's that. And then I have my eight cups of potatoes. These are red and just a few white ones I had laying around left on the cabinet. All right. So I'm gonna stir these all in together. Now it's gonna seem like you don't have enough juice to vegetable ratio. Just think, the vegetables are gonna cook down, the meat's gonna absorb a little bit and expand. Um, the juices from the meat are gonna extract a little bit into the bone broth, so it's actually perfect. These are um, quart jars, so two quart jars worth. All right, so I'm gonna show you what this looks like in the pot. And what I'm going to do is put this bad boy on pressure cook high for three hours. If you really needed it to cook uh, faster, it would be done in an hour and a half. But to get that pull apart amazingness, I would do three in here. If you're doing it on the stove top, you can't walk away from it like you can with a pressure cooker or a traditional uh, slow cooker because when you have this intense flame heat, the liquid's gonna boil out quick. So you do, I mean, you can set a timer and check it every like 20 minutes, but you're going to have to add more broth 
in, into that because it's going to evaporate out so super quickly. So it's a good, you know, you can't walk away from that. You'll end up with a burnt roast, burnt vegetables, and no liquid in the bottom of your pot. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I've done it. All right. So with the slow cooker, you're going to do high. I believe most traditional slow cookers, it's three to four hours on high. That's kind of what you need to do. Um, longer the six to eight if you can would be better but since it's a pressure cooker it actually cooks the pressure in tents and helps break it down faster than even a slow cooker will so there's not a right or wrong to it but there are different tips and tricks to each type that you're going to be cooking with so i'm going to get this bad boy hooked up and turned on i cannot wait to show you what it looks like in just a few hours when it's done all right guys it's depressurized and ready to go look at this i can literally ooh, it's super hot by the way but i mean i can literally just pull it apart oh my gosh so we actually are having guests in a little bit so i actually ended the time early so it only took two and a half hours and it took 15 minutes to depressurize it so that is one of the beautiful things about a pressure cooker is that piece you can actually take it out super early and it's still absolutely amazing I mean the potatoes oh and the bone broth mm. and then the carrots so this is why you want to leave your carrots a little bit bigger because they actually stayed intact so just a little tip and that's about the thickness of the potatoes so these will be nice and yummy if you go any smaller than that it'll just be mush all over the place which is really good but you know there's just something about that texture let's see if I can get this out without burning myself so it is going to fall apart, so I'm just trying to be very gentle with it. Whoop! Ah, there it goes. But that is just amazing. Oh, God. Mmm. I hope it's time they show up soon because I'm ready to eat. And then I made some paleo brownies for dessert. Anyway, guys, Leah Hill her out. What we're going to do with the leftovers, just a quick tip, you can actually put them in the obvious year to put them in the refrigerator. But... You can actually shred it and add it for roast beef sandwiches the next day, or you can put it with potatoes for uh, bangers and mash, or you can actually take this, put it in your fruit processor, and you can make like a brisket, put a little barbecue sauce that you like in there, make it into uh, barbecue sandwiches the next day. I mean, there's so much you can do with it. So you're not limited to just this. There's so many combinations and so many things to do with this particular cuts of meat.